The first thing we want to do is get some things uh, out of the way this morning that I think that everybody's really going to love. And so, Joe and Marianne, you want to come up here real quick? Our men, one of our mentor houses and our mentor house. Love them dearly. They take care of a lot of our girls. It's hard to get mentor houses, you guys. So give them a hand, would you? <laughs> Okay. Oh, you got the okay. Good morning. Well, it's been such a delight having the girl that we're going to announce and invite up is Rachel. And she's so dear to our heart. She came through the program a couple of years ago when she was a girl. And when she came back, now she's a woman. And she's a beautiful young woman, and I'm just so proud of her and so grateful that she knew where to came. She came home. So I'd like to invite Rachel and her family and loved ones up here, please. <laughs> I love that. She said, the first time you came through, you were a girl. <laughs> so what are you now? <laughs> Good morning, church. I love you, Rachel. Bless you. You're okay, girl. Sorry, I'm really emotional. <laughs> There's one underneath. I would just like to open in prayer really okay. quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you come into my, to this room, Lord. Just, just give me the words to speak. I just ask that you come into my life and help me to speak life into this, amen. this uh, congregation, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So, my name is Rachel. Um, I struggled with drug addiction. Um, at a young age, I was uh, chemically dependent and codependent until I came into the ranch on June 25th. I was introduced to the Lord when I was really young. As a child, I was taught to have a relationship with God by my father who passed away when I was 14 in 2009. That was around the time my life took a turn for the worse. He was a well-respected, hardworking man. He took care of his family and taught his kids integrity. A lot of my family was brought up Catholic. My mother was brought up in a Mormon home. Both converted to Christianity. I didn't grow up in a church, just attending the occasional funeral, which helped me to value life. I consider my life as blessed. Through all the struggle and trouble, I give God all the glory. Yeah. I couldn't have made it to where I'm at in my own strength. Only a supernatural power, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, could break the chains of bondage I had in my life. Amen. I lost my identity completely after graduating the ranch and falling harder into my addiction in 2016 and 17. They say that seven more spirits will replace the old. I found myself trapped, and I've forgotten who to turn to. I didn't take it seriously the first time through the ranch, and I thought I could do it on my own. So in and out of jail, like most addicts, I was destroying my body, thankful when getting arrested because my flesh was trying to kill itself. Yep. Little did I know what the Lord was doing in my life. I spent most of this year in jail where I surrendered my life to the Lord again. It was there where I realized that He had never left me. Isaiah 61.1 really stood out to me and it spoke to me while I was in jail. The jail chaplain became really a really great friend to me, testifying for me in court. Isaiah 61, oops, sorry. Isaiah 61, one was an example of me wanting to change, which is, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. 
By the grace of God, I was re released into the program. The program has helped me to get my life back. I see life in a new perspective. The last time hitting rock bottom was the hardest, but my life wasn't falling apart. It was just falling into place. I'm putting, I put my trust in the, I trust, put my trust in him that he goes before me and makes the crooked places straight. No longer do I live in fear, but I live for an audience of one. Right on. I stand on the word with the joy of the Lord as my strength. My identity in Christ is, is as a daughter of the king and a child of God. Just recently I was arrested while I was in the program and it gave me a chance to speak into people's lives who needed it the most. Thankfully, thankfully I was able to finish the program and come back in. Instead of glorifying sin and wickedness, I was able to share my testimony, which gave people hope. Being light in the darkest of places, I was out there searching for the truth, but my soul knew where to turn to. 2 Corinthians 15, 17, 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm no longer a slave to sin, but right. a servant to God. Um, this is uh, my support group. <laughs> um, I just want to thank all of you guys for helping me get here because I needed the support. And it's so great to be able to fellowship and share the same one common denominator, and that is Jesus. And I love all of you guys. And thank you. Now, you have some that are from out of, uh, out, not in the church today. Introduce them. And okay, this is Chaplain Kathy. <laughs> She's Yay. the one that testified for me on the stand. And we were just, she's just helped me so much through the hardest of times of me being incarcerated. We would enjoy just reading the word, right. studying. So, yes. Our chaplains that we have, you guys, in the five northern counties, you need to understand the importance of these chaplains. Uh, and I think sometimes we need to know the importance. Because <laughs> when we go in, we minister to a lot of people. And uh, we don't always get to see the outcome, do we? And so, uh, Kathy, your family, and, and Fred up north, and, uh, and here are the ones we have, uh, five just from our church that are in there. But uh, I want to I thank all the chaplains that go in there because you do make a difference. And this is one of the, the people right here that you have made a difference. Amen. She's an incredible person. So, Rachel, uh, your average day out in the world, what did it look like when you got up in the morning? I'd wake up. Well, I probably wouldn't go to sleep, but um, I was looking for my next fix. I was broken. I was, I was lost. I found my identity in drugs, and um, I was trying to fill an empty void that only Jesus could fill. Um, I just didn't care. So you're up all night cleaning your fridge five times. <laughs> <laughs> er, yes. <laughs> and. And you're constantly seeking and searching for something just to, to help you. But help you what? Why were you so down? What was, your, what was your reason in your eyes that you believed that you were using and down like that? Um, <clears throat> at first I was just trying to... At first it was just a numbing from when my father passed away. And okay. then it turned into... That was the only way I could get any sort of comfort. I didn't want to feel my emotions, so I numbed them out with drugs. And Amen. Were you and your dad close? Yes. Um, he passed away when I was 14, so that's a really hard age growing up, yeah. especially in today's world. Um, he was a hard worker. He was a logger, so he was always at work but he taught us the value of life and everything. And when he passed away, my family, it just broke everyone. Um, so at that point, it wasn't just you. Other people in your family just went and they went out into the world. Yes. Isn't that something? 
Um, by the way, hers is the average family. And so when this happens, a lot of people want to be in denial of what's happening in, in our world that we live in today, especially in the U.S. right here. But uh, this is average. This is what we see all the time. Uh, when somebody dies, when we can't handle it. Um, in fact, statistically, there's so many people that are not born with the right amount of transmitters in their brain, with the dopamine, with the adrenaline, with the serotonin, with all this to be able to handle stress, depression, and fear. And so because parents use, grandparents started who knows where. And, uh, and it can even start with legal over-the-counter drugs like that. And so now we don't have what it takes to be able to handle that. So when something happens in our life, we just go ballistic and we just want to go use and abuse and, um, and mess ourselves up. And so, and outside of Christ, and I just made this statement, I just came back from a conference in Arizona, it was a national securities conference that was there, and we ended up talking a lot about, uh, in, in fact, it was the talk while we were there, because part of my thing, everybody knows what we do up here, and the people that we are securing, okay, that we're watching out for being the body of Christ, they're broken, they're absolutely broken. But my whole thing was, our first defense is Christ. Our second one is putting a person down or taking out a gun or whatever to try to stop a guy from killing somebody in a church. But, but our first defense is Christ. And we always want to, in a courtroom, so many people leave Christ out of it. Uh, out in the world, people leave Christ out of it. And they tried to do that throughout your court process, but there was always somebody in your life, the Kathy, saying, it's got to be about Jesus. Without Jesus, you're going to go back. And you had to learn that lesson once. And so, now that Christ is in your life, what are your desires? I have, <laughs> Lord willingly. <laughs> um, I, just, I just want a simple life. I just want to live for Christ and serve him. And I just, I have a lot of big plans, but Lord willingly, they'll go through. I would like to open a house for troubled women to live in. Um, Lord willingly, it will go through. I'm gonna go to the IOP house. <laughs> you going into the IOP house? Yes, <laughs> I'm doing it the right, time, the right way this time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, and they're looking forward to you. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, I would like to um, just say thank you to my mother and my family who's not here right now. Are they watching? Yes, I believe they will watch, or they're watching, I'm not sure, but okay. I would just like to tell them I love them, and that I just thank them, thank them for everything. I'm sorry for p everything I've put them through. Um, and I have full hope that the Lord will restore our family, and I just love, love them, love the Lord. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Give her a hand, you guys. Praise the Lord. Well, if I could, I don't want to put you on the spot, Kathy, but the congregation normally, they stand with us and we pray for her. And if you would like to pray for her as she goes back out into the world, then I would love that. So, whoops, sorry about hear that or is that just okay okay she's going to be on her mic dear gracious father thank you Lord. we just praise your holy name we yeah. thank you so much for jesus yeah. father thank you for rescuing this precious precious woman amen i just am so encouraged by her zeal and her love for you and her spirit father as she um goes back out without as much safety net. Please be there for her every day. And Father, I just pray that her family has been encouraged by what they have seen in this, in this sweet woman. Father, walk with her daily as she continues to walk with you. Thank you for bringing her into my life. And thank you for the encouragement she has given other women that are currently in jail still. Father, she has been such an encouragement to so many. Bless this woman yes. and bless her ministry in the yes. future. 
Yes. Thank you for this opportunity to be with her today and yes. witness this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Captain. All right. We have some people that are going to graduate. So, and these aren't just people that are graduating. I want to make this clear. These people are not just graduating. What we're celebrating uh, is their salvation. Do you hear me? These guys, when they're excited about Jesus and they graduate from something like this and they got a bunch of prayer behind them, let me tell you, they're kamikaze Christians. And I'm, I'm not joking when I say that. They become kamikaze Christians. Okay? In other words, whatever it takes, we're going for it. So I'm going to invite these men to come up. And when they come up, I'm going to invite their families to come up and stand by them. Okay? So, Mr. Dylan Henderson, I want you to come on up. He's not graduating? I mean, I will. Okay. That means we only got three graduations today. <laughs> All right. That's really good. Oh, I was hoping you graduated today. I need some taping done, man. No. Okay. Mr. Josh Easley, praise the Lord. <laughs> Family, come on up with him. Derek, come on up with him too. <laughs> Love you, man. There you go. Beautiful family. Beautiful family. Robert Dunsmore, come on up. The ones that are here for him, come on up with him. What happened to you, brother? A thorn? Ooh, you doing okay? Oh, bone spurs. Ugh. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. And Nicholas Valdez, come on up. No, go ahead and use it. Is he, are you sure you're okay, brother? You could take my chair if you need it. Okay. All right. Amen. You know what? Your life affects these people and more. Just right off the bat. Doing great and wonderful things. Your life is affecting these people right here. Big time. And will for the rest of your life. This is huge, my friend. And it doesn't stop here. It goes so far beyond this. Salvation is a life change. Christianity isn't something that we do. It's who we are. And so I'm excited for you. Okay? you got a beautiful family. And listen to the testimony that they have of you. Okay? That is fantastic. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the... Okay? And so your testimony now is going to help you to overcome. Beautiful children, beautiful family, and you're ready to start? All right, come on up, brother. Nicholas. I just want to start out by saying I, I was not going to share my testimony, but then I realized that would have been pretty selfish of me because I think God wants me to share this testimony with y'all and I think it's going to be good for y'all to hear this, what he's done in my life and how he led me to salvation. Uh, I'm 25. I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. And it's crazy how I got here, but we'll get to that. Um, I mean, I just, the devil really deceived me. I was really deep into my filth and I was on the streets and in Texas and Dallas, really, there's a lot of mosquitoes, really big ones. <laughs> But uh, anyways, I had a bunch of mosquito bites on my leg, and I just being awake for so long and just, you know, all drugged out, I was scratching on them real hard, and they turned into uh, abscesses and staph infection. And I ignored it, and I kept walking, and one day I just, I just collapsed. I couldn't walk. My leg just, it would not move. It hurt so bad. I called my mom, and I was like, you know, y'all got to come pick me up. I'm not trying to con y'all out of anything. I just, I really need a ride to the hospital. And she came. They dropped everything, and they came and picked me up, and... Uh, oh. They drove me to the hospital, and I just remember I was just so sleep deprived. I slept through everything. I remember waking up, the doctors telling me there's, you know, I had the EKG on, there's infections around my heart, 
from IV drug use. There was my leg was just my white T blood cells were so low. Uh, my resting heart rate was really low. And it was just, it wasn't looking good. And I remember just being so scared, thinking I was not going to be able to walk ever again. I was like, man, I really did it now. You know, I just really did it. And I thought I was just so far deep in the hole that I couldn't get out. And then I remember my mom telling me, hey, you have an uncle up there that knows a pastor that runs a, a program called the Good Samaritan. It's a two-month-long program. And I was like, oh, yep, nope, too long. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you also can't smoke any uh, tobacco. Can I have any tobacco? I was like, oh, yeah, that's, def that's two no's now. They're like, oh, and it's in North Idaho. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm definitely not leaving Texas. So. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't tell anybody this till I was off the plane and driving here, but I prayed that night. And I said, God, you know, if you're real, you know, reveal yourself to me. Show me something. Come on. Heal my leg. Let me be able to walk. Just take these infections away from my heart. And I will go to that program, and I'll give it my all, and I'll try my hardest. And believe it or not, the next day I woke up, they put a tube down my throat, took pictures of my heart. And the doctor, they pulled my blood, and she came back a few hours later and was like, I don't know how this happened, but the infections are gone. My leg was healed over. There you go, brother. Good testimony. All the wounds on my legs were scabbed over, and she's like, try to walk. And I, I remember being kind of scared, but I stepped down, and, and I could walk. And my mom was just in tears because I could walk. And, it was, and I was like, all right, well, you know, it, it's, it's time to go. Let's do it. And my mom was like, you really want to do this? And she's like, yeah. So they got me a plane ticket, and the next day I was on a plane and flying up here to Idaho. And everything went so smooth, and it was, it was God that did it. I had no ID. They were worried about how I was going to get on the plane. We went two hours early. I got through TSA in five minutes. All we had to do was show him a letter from the rehab facility. He was like, all right, let's go. You're good. It, was, it wasn't a problem at all. It was, it just, there was no layovers. Everything was just so smooth. Right. And I didn't know this before, but my mom and my stepdad, Kyle, and my uncle, Dirk, had met with John Padula two weeks before any of this happened. And they were praying, praying for me to come here. And they were praying and praying. And you know, they said, in God's time, he'll come. It'll happen. Just be ready. When he, when he says he's ready to come, throw him on a plane and just get him up here. It doesn't matter if he's high, if he's sick. Just get him here. And two weeks later, you know, that, I was in the hospital and that happened to me, so. There you go. So, man, I mean, and God has just really shown me a lot. I mean, when I first got to the program, I got here and I was kind of going against the grain. I didn't want to do anything. And then I was like, man, why am I not understanding anything? This Bible is making no sense to me. And then, you know, I finally, someone made, made a good point. You got to submit and surrender and give it all. Give it all up to God. And you got to be prepared to give your children to God. Your, I mean, get everything. You got to love Him first. That's right. That's right. And when I did that, I mean, it was amazing. The wisdom I was getting, the knowledge I was getting, learning how to apply it to my life. I mean, it was amazing. And I just really just want to thank Joe Daniel. He was one of the main facilitators there. He's been a big impact on my life. I want to thank John Padula, Stephen Hemming. Y'all's walk is really, really powerful, man. It's really motivating to a lot of us. And I want to thank you, Pastor Tim, for what you're doing here. I just want to go and tell everybody all over the news, tell, spread it all over, tell people in Dallas about this. I mean, this program is awesome, man. Love you, great. But God has done amazing things in my life, and he's still blessed me. He's my daughter. I love you, Paisley, so much, and I'm just so glad I can be the dad that you deserve to have in your life. And Mom, I love you, and I'm sorry for all the things. Kyle, I love you. You didn't deserve any of that. You've been so good to my mom, and you're the best man she's ever had in her life, and you're just a really good influence on me, and I just love having you in my life. And Uncle Dirk, if it wasn't for you, I mean, none of this would ever happen. I thank you so much. Cody, Ramundo, Ron, Pickle, Austin, Chris, I thank all y'all for coming out here to support me. Josh, we did all our time together, and I love you, man. And it's just been amazing what God's doing in my life, and I'm ready to start my new life here and just work and just be a son of God and just spread the gospel and hopefully save lives. And thank y'all. Right on. Good job. Keep up that testimony. Okay. Are you ready, bro? Oh, oh, you want him to go? You want him to go next? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. All right. This is going to be hard. Um, first, I want to introduce my family. <laughs> Your, um, my brother Derek, Jory, I love you. you know, me and Derek have been close since we were five years old. Josh, I love you. It's right on. My sister's husband, um, Malachi, my nephew, my sister Cheryl, my daughter Meadow, oh, beautiful, my wife Johnny. My father-in-law, John, 
my other daughter, Madison, my mom. Right my mom, Diane, longtime friend, Brenda, my sister, Leslie, and my nephew, Elias. Um, Good you can go ahead and put, put the pictures up. Um, I think February of this year, um, February of this year, my older brother Ezekiel, he, um, he passed away. Well, he found out he had cancer on Christmas and he died two months later. This is his wife and his son, one of them. Um, and at that point, I started not, yeah, my brother's the one on the far right, my sister's on the le left, and then me, and then my little brother on the far left. About a month after my older brother passed away, that's my little brother on the right, my little brother passed away suddenly. Mm. <laughs> Mom, I'm so sorry. pain you've gone through. My mom told me you have to walk through life with 100% faith. And that's the only thing. Leslie, I love you. Elias. I love you guys. Um, I came to the program two years ago. I lost both my brothers and I, I was angry at God. I didn't know I had a hard time believing that there was a God. But now, after coming into the program, I just wanted to throw drugs down my body to keep the, the feelings down. Um, I came in the program and it let me, let me release my emotions. I've been crying. I'm glad I came in with Joe Daniels because without him, I, I almost walked out a couple of times, but now I'm probably going to be close with him the rest of my life. He's, <laughs> he's a mother hen, kind of. Um, <laughs> but, yes, uh, he is. Yeah, I, I actually, this, I almost wanted to leave after the first 30 days. I asked John, I said, can I just do a 30 days and I'll be good? But uh, this last six or seven days, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that has happened to me. Thank you, And it would take a long time to explain, but I'll explain it to you. We're not on stage. Um, I've put my family through through some of the worst stuff you can imagine, but they're still behind me. My father-in-law put his daughter through a lot, but she's still behind me after 22 years. And my son's not here, Dominic. If you're watching, I love you. And, Thank you, you all. I, I love you guys. And uh, I just want to say some quick thanks. Uh, Derek, I love you. Uh, Nicholas Clawwitter, Nico Valdez, Bryce Bigham, Zach Mon, Sean Pickle, Eric King, Zach Johnson, Mike Moore, Dylan Henderson, Joe Daniel Garza, Jonathan Robinson, MJ, Nancy, Kelly, John, all you guys. I've destroyed. Ten times more lives than that, but it took that many people to, with God working through them, to help me get through the program. And I want to thank every one of you. I love you guys. Thank you. Right on. God has you. Can you carry over my family before they leave? Okay. Here's your Bible and stuff here too. I didn't do any of my notes. <laughs> That's okay. Ready, brother? All right. Everybody welcome Mr. Dunsmore. Here we go, brother. Where's your mom? Good morning. I'm Robert Dunsmore. I was born here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, I'm getting pretty old, so I've done a lot of bad things by now. And I thank God that uh, this program was here for me. Um, my family, they never gave up on me. And that's pretty amazing because um, I pushed them to the limits. 
So uh, this program is uh, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, you can really get to know God well there, and that's exactly what I did. So um, the staff here um, can't even begin to describe um, how they fit. The complete puzzle is there. Every piece that uh, you need, God puts it there. So uh, I just have nothing more to say than uh, thank you very much, God, and thank all of you. And thank you, my family. My family. And uh, thank you for being here. Now I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to end with a prayer. If that's all right. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of thine, mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And uh, that Amen. pretty much says it all. Thank you very much. Right on. Thanks, 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 okay. okay. And Mama is watching, and uh, we prayed together a lot for Robert before he ever showed up here. Uh, and I'm talking uh, years before he got here. And so, praise the Lord, Mom. There's your son. So, praise the Lord. Congregation, if you'll stand, and then I, I got a couple different prayers. One, I want to pray, you know, whenever a family loses, uh, loses somebody like that, there's just so much internal damage like that. There's the question of why. There's the, um, there's the confusion that is, that is going on, and the sorrow and the grief is so far down. Sometimes it's hard to reach down and be able to pluck that out, and so... <laughs> this congregation loves to pray. So my first prayer, if I could, I'd really like to pray, pray for your family. Okay? Father, I, I ask in Jesus' name that you will touch the Easley family. I thank you, Father, for allowing him to have such an incredible testimony. And at the same time he's given his testimony, part of that, Lord God, is he's lost... Uh, He's lost two legs to a three-legged stool. Praise the Lord that his sister's still here. But Lord, the, it seems like your, the closest friends are gone. The ones that you laughed with and lived with and enjoyed. And so Lord, I pray that somehow you will touch that grief and that sorrow that is in there. And I pray that you'll minister to it, Lord. Bring this family, all of them, to you. Let them be reconciled to their God. You're the only one that can bring that type of peace into their life. And so I ask, Lord, please, please help them. And I pray that Josh would be the type of guy that uh, the integrity of his heart, of the change in his life, would affect his family and all of those around him. And I pray that they would all come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and come to know the peace that passes all understanding. So please, Lord, touch the sorrow and touch the grief in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Graduates, come on up here. I'm going to pray for all three of you. Congregation, you're still standing with me, right? <laughs> Amen. What you guys have went through, thousands of people want. Thousands of people. And here you are. You guys can come gather around him if you want. And so here you are. So you need to understand what I was uh, telling somebody out there this morning. You were chosen. You really were. This isn't a joke. This isn't something you take lightly. This is, you were chosen. Because Robert, I know for you, man, it was a, it was a fight. It was a fight. And everything that you've done and everything that you've walked away from and all that kind of stuff. I said, no, this can't be anymore. It has to be where God chooses you. Where God changes you. Otherwise, prison could be the rest of your life. I mean, there's ministry there too. You know what I mean? But that's not what God chose. God chose to give you a chance. 
to be a real living, moving, breathing testimony of how he can change your life, how he can heal your body just, just so you can make a decision, just, just so you can trust him. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. And everything that's happened to you, Josh, you've now turned it into something that could be good. Don't let it be the thing that rips you up and rips your family up and where sorrow turns to grief, grief turns to bitterness, and the bitterness in our hearts tend to make us crumble. It's, it's time that somebody jumps out of the middle of this thing and says, okay, from now on, when we remember them, there has to be a victory. We're not victims, we're victors. And there's got to be a victory somewhere in this testimony. There has to be a victory. And you're that victory, my, my friend. Okay? So in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, for our graduates this morning. I know, Lord God, that when they leave, that's the mission field out there. And you've called them to be missionaries. So when they leave this place, I pray, Father, that you would anoint them, Lord God, to be able to do righteous things. We can't do that without you. And so I pray for the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to literally embed himself into their hearts and minds. And I pray that you'll speak through them, that you will minister through them, and righteous acts would be performed by them through the Holy Spirit. And many would come to salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you decided, out of all those people out there, you decided to pluck them out of the miry clay. To pluck them out of prison. Pluck them out of their disease. Pluck them out of the addiction. And you set them on a rock. And now I pray, Lord God, that they would never leave that rock. You are a rock, Lord, and I'm going nowhere. I am standing always on the rock. Let them do the same, Lord. Let them find good Christian friends and mentors. Let them stay with it. Let them love it. Let them embrace it. And let them finally go out right now, Lord God. The Bible says so they can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So let them do it, Lord. Let them do it today. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Love you guys.